What's happening my Jack family? Coach Scott here, jackedafterparty.com. Today's video, we're gonna talk about meal timing, what to eat, and when to eat it to get shredded after 40. This is a frequently asked question that I often get from men over 40 who are looking for an that last bit of stubborn belly fat. When it comes to getting shredded after 40, your top priority should be hitting your daily caloric and macronutrient targets. That's gonna be what's going to account for the vast majority of your success, your results, so make sure you are mastering that first. When it comes to meal timing, it's really when we start dealing with some of the minutia, meaning that in the big picture, meal timing only has a small impact on your overall success in getting shredded after 40. But if you are consistently hitting your caloric and macro targets, each and every day, and you want to take things to the next level, really optimize your nutrition, meal timing is a good thing to explore at this point. But you got to understand it's also very tough to measure and gauge your success and the difference that comes from uh, modifying your meal timing. But before you dive into optimizing your meal timing, as a coach, I'd first recommend that you take a look at sleep and stress management and make sure those are optimized first. If you're not at a consistent uh, sleep-wake schedule, you're you're not getting an adequate amount of sleep, seven to nine hours of sleep a night consistently, quality sleep, and you are stressed, I think that, that focusing on meal timing is probably not the best thing at that moment. I would master sleep and stress management first and then get onto meal timing at that point because I think those two factors are gonna have a much bigger impact on helping you get shredded after 40, break through any fat, plot, fat loss plateaus, and just optimize your overall performance and well-being. And with that being said, let's dive into what you should eat and when to eat it to get shredded after 40. If you enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up button, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro that would benefit from hearing this information, do him a favor, share this video with them. More than anything, I would love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback and your own personal experiences. Meal timing is a much more complex topic than a lot of people make it out to be. There are so many factors to consider, especially when it comes to the meal composition itself. There are many factors within a meal that can either make it fast digesting or slow digesting and that can really have an impact on the release of nutrients into your bloodstream and an impact on your overall performance, how you feel, and your success. Based on the current research, I still think that the ideal meal timing comes down to personal preference. Going with what feels natural to you and an approach that kind of suits your lifestyle and makes it easier to stick with your diet, to hit your caloric and macronutrient target consistently each and every day. But with that being said, it's okay to kind of um, get some ideas from other people and experiment with a different type of meal timing to see how you perform. But once you find something that suits you best, I would try to stick with that and keep it consistent. I think that has a bigger impact overall, consistently sticking with the meal timing rather than trying to change it up uh, every month and, and experimenting way too often. And like I said, it is tough to measure the impact that meal timing can have on your success. So I'd be looking at things like like your performance during your workout? Did changing your meal timing up allow you to, to perform better throughout your workout? Do you have more sustained energy throughout the day? Is it allowing you to sleep better at night? And just remember, there are no absolutes. There are so many different meal timing guidelines out there, and you can hear success stories from every single one of them. You got intermittent fasting where they're delaying their breakfast, sometimes till mid-afternoon. They've got success with that. You've got the carb backloading group who says that it's you may sleep better by consuming the majority of your carbs before bed. And they'll suggest that eating carbs before a workout is not good for you. And there are people who do indeed feel that way. That's again, once again, where it really comes down to individual preferences and really being aware of how meal timing affects you, your energy, your performance, your sleep. Uh, I have followed very precise diet templates where they're designed for elite level athletes, like people who are really, really, really picking at the minutia there and they will 
they had me following a meal plan where, I mean, you're waking up and within that first hour of, of waking, you are eating your first meal and you're eating right before bedtime. Again, the whole idea is that when you're waking up, uh, you're in a catabolic state and you want to try to get yourself in an anabolic state as quickly as possible. That's going to come from consuming a meal and then eating your last meal right before bed. Um, again, it's going to depend on the composition of that meal, but uh, it's going to keep you anabolic while you're um, sleeping throughout the night and help rebuild, repair, and grow your muscles while you're sleeping. So there are multiple approaches and they can all work for certain people. Uh, the key is to not be dogmatic in any of these, to have an open mind, kind of a willingness to experiment and, and and don't pass judgment like all right this is an approach i'm gonna it may have worked for a bunch of other people i'm not sure if it's going to work for me the most important thing is to have that heightened sense of awareness and focus on myself not not use a bias because my favorite guru says this is the best thing since sliced bread in this video i'm going to be sharing the meal timing approach that i have found works best for me feel free to experiment with it yourself to see how you respond to it but don't take it as gospel again it all comes down to personal preferences and what this channel is all about what i pride myself on is the shared experience we're all learning and growing from each other it's great to see that everyone responds to different meal timings in their own personal best way in a recent video i shared that the best meal frequency to get shredded after 40 is to consume three to six meals per day if we're looking at optimizing our nutrition here and our meal timing i would kind of narrow it more down to four to six meals. I kind of like that four to five meals best. Um, it's just great to get that, that steady flow of nutrients going through your bloodstream. And if you are going to only consume three meals per day, if that suits you best, I'd recommend that those meals include uh, more slower digesting food. So it takes longer for it to, to kind of spread out those nutrients throughout the day because it's taking longer to digest in your system and release it into your bloodstream. The best recommendation is to evenly spread out your meals. Typical recommendation is every three to four hours and each meal should be roughly close in uh, caloric content. It's also a good idea to consume one of those meals one to two hours prior to your workout and the another meal one to two hours post-workout. Now let's look at how to spread out your macros throughout the day. We'll begin with protein. Typical re recommendation is to consume one gram of protein per pound body weight. Some would say one gram of protein per pound lean body mass. One of the biggest mistakes I see men over 40 make when it comes to protein is they, they overemphasize protein in their post-workout meal and they don't pay attention to it enough throughout the remainder of the meals. We gotta understand if you're training like five days per week, your body needs a steady flow of protein. It is basically rebuilding and repairing itself constantly. The other problem with consuming an excessive amount of protein in a single meal is that your body can only utilize so much of that protein at once to go towards repairing, rebuilding, and growing your muscle. So don't mistake that with, I often hear people say that your body can only digest so much protein at one time. That's not true. Your body can digest all of that protein. It's that only so much of it can go towards building and repairing the muscle. The excessive amount is just going to get burned off as energy. So the way I see it, I mean, a lot of times we're consuming protein for the purpose of repairing, rebuilding, and growing our muscles. We don't really wanna use it so much as burning energy. We can use the carbs for that and fat for that, even our stored body fat for that. We want all the protein we're consuming to go towards repairing, rebuilding, and growing our muscles. So if we consume a good chunk of our protein, all in one meal or just a couple of meals throughout the day, we're not maximizing the benefits from that protein to go towards muscle building and repair. Or, or in the case of fat loss, maintaining, preserving our muscle mass during this time period. I recommend that you spread your protein out evenly throughout the day. So if your goal is to consume 200 grams of protein per day and you're consuming five meals per day, I'd spread that out um, through five meals consisting of approximately 40 grams of protein per meal. I think a common um, recommendation that I give is to make sure that you are consuming at least 20 to 40 grams of protein per meal. If you're consuming more than 40 grams of protein per meal, I would recommend that that meal be a more slower digesting meal. So include some fats in there to help slow, slow the digestive process down. Even having carbs in there is gonna slow the digestive process down as well. Uh, it, try not to consume less than 20 
uh, grams of protein per meal because it may not be adequate enough to spark uh, protein synthesis. And now let's talk carbs, and I recommend that you have carbs with each and every meal. Part of it comes back to what I discussed earlier about uh, not wanting your body to use protein as energy. So if you had a protein-only meal, um, part of that protein is going to be used as energy because your body doesn't have any other nutrients to pull from at that time. Sure, it can go from stored fat, but it's going to go for the easiest thing to grab first and easier to grab that protein that's going through your bloodstream right now than it is to grab fat from your body. So if you combine carbs and fats with a meal, um, your body is going to, especially carbs, carbs is going to, it's your body's preferred energy source. So if you can um, combine carbs with protein, your body is going to be utilizing that protein as the energy source and the protein is more likely going to be used to repair, rebuild, and grow your muscles. I recommend consuming half your daily carbs around your workout, maybe about 20% pre-workout, 30% post-workout. You don't have to get precise with this. Uh, just a recommendation, uh, having those carbs pre-workout, it's gonna give you fuel to perform your best during your workout. And having full glycogen stores in your muscles is also um, signal, it's an anabolic signal to your body. So it's gonna put you in an anabolic state leading into the workout. Having those carbs post-workout, uh, your body is primed to absorb those carbohydrates. So consuming them post-workout, they're gonna be less likely to be stored as fat. So a couple benefits from there. And I would definitely recommend the pre-workout carbs be more fast digesting. Um, something like fruit compared to having a potato. Um, and I, I tend to, I, I prefer to have like veggies with every single meal, but my pre-workout meal is the one meal where if I do have veggies, it's going to be a very small amount. Um, but I, I ideally, I don't have um, veggies pre-workout, mainly because I don't like to have a large meal before my workout. I like to have something that's going to be fast digesting, going to get into my bloodstream quickly, and is not going to cause any kind of gastric distress. So oftentimes it will be fruit with with a, um, a bowl of plain Greek yogurt. So pretty fast digesting foods that aren't gonna sit in my stomach and not upset me during my workout. But get into my bloodstream, not only allow me to perform during my workout, but that's gonna be the fuel that my body is gonna be utilizing post-workout right away. Now consuming carbs during your workout is a bit of a controversial topic. Uh, there's not a ton of research when it comes to bodybuilding and, and getting shredded or getting jacked after 40. Uh, it's more in lines with the kind of the longer endurance type training where you may experience greater benefit from it. But when you're just weight training for 60, 75 minutes, even 90 minutes, uh, chances are you're not going to need it. Uh, but there is anecdotal evidence that it can be beneficial. It can help you perform better during your workout. There are coaches like John Meadows who um, he's coached a lot of clients. He um, finds himself that there is a benefit to consuming intracarbs um, in your meal plan, uh, and he's noticed it with his clients and in himself. Uh, I have experimented with myself as well. I used Vitargo for I think three to four months uh, during my workouts, and I gotta say, like. Could it be placebo? I don't know, I doubt it, um, but I did have more energy throughout my workout when I was sipping on uh, the Vitargo. I'd, in fat loss mode, I would wait 30 minutes into the workout before starting to consume it because you want your body to start utilizing the fat while you're training, utilizing the energy that's there um, before you start getting into that carbs and then um, and using those carbs for performance as well as reducing cortisol. I think that's what some of the theory behind consuming the intra-workout carbs is that it can lower, reduce the amount of cortisol, which is catabolic. Again, it's it, you just gotta weigh the pros and cons. It's it's liquid calories, so it may not be as satisfying, but if it allows you to perform better, especially when you're in a caloric deficit, you're low on energy, if using 100 to 160 calories worth of uh, this, this carb drink, if it's gonna help you perform better during your workout, feel better, that's that could be a good thing. Um, but if it's gonna make you hungrier at the end of the day because you consumed a portion of your calories in the form of liquid, 
maybe it's not so beneficial as well. So again, this is where all of this meal timing stuff comes into personal preference, having a heightened sense of awareness, listening how your body responds. And again, as I mentioned, post-workout, consuming about 30% of your carbs for the day in that post-workout meal, you should consume it one to two hours post-workout. Some of the very precise people would say, consume it within an hour. Some would say that those carbs should be um, faster digesting carbs. I find it doesn't matter so much, especially if you're consuming it in that one to two hours post-workout, you should be more than fine because at that point, your body is utilizing the nutrients that you just consumed in that pre-workout meal um, more likely. Um, but yeah, the point that your, your body is gonna be more likely to utilize those carbs to replenish your glycogen stores um, than it is to store it as fat. For fats, I recommend consuming about 20 to 30% of your calories from fat. And I recommend not having much of those fats around your uh, workout meal so pre-workout, post-workout meals should be a little lower on fat content, uh, mainly because you want those meals to be absorbed a little bit quicker, uh, get into your bloodstream faster. So first one, to give you more energy during your workout uh, and really be readily available post-workout for um, utilizing those nutrients right away to repair, rebuild, and grow your muscles. And then that post-workout meal, again, try and get it into that bloodstream as fast as possible because once those nutrients get used up from the pre-workout meal, you want to have those nutrients from the post-workout meal ready to go to that rebuilding, repairing, and growing process. Then spread out the rest of the fats throughout the day. So if you're consuming four meals per day, the pre-workout, post-workout meal, are going to be lower in fat and the first meal the other two meals are going to be higher in um, fat content there so we're looking at approximately i find for overall my macro my natural macronutrient breakdown whether i'm in trying to get shredded after 40 trying to build muscle get jacked after 40 i am looking at a macronutrient breakdown of roughly 40 30 30 40 percent carbs 30 percent fat 30% uh, protein, um, but it does vary. I, I'm like in the ballpark of those numbers. There are some days where I'm a little bit higher in carbs, a little bit lower in fat. Uh, a lot of it depends on the makeup of my dinner meal. So, but I'm typically in that ballpark area. Um, some people find it a little bit better to reduce their fat close to 20%. Mainly because it gives them a little bit more food volume um, to consume. Um, but yeah, I, th I find when you're getting enough veggies in your diet, uh, you can get a lot of food volume in your diet without having to sacrifice fat. I find that keeping that fat closer to that 30 grams, 30% uh, of my diet um, keeps my hormone health in check, which is very, very important for us men over 40. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. Again, if you know a fellow bro who would benefit from hearing this information, do me a favor and share it with them. But more than anything, I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback and your own personal experiences. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jack After 40. Hope you have yourself an absolutely amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.